Good evening, everyone. Um, it's another opportunity for us to talk about um, missions and then um, what we have been talking about for the past um, couple of days now is um, is about your role, your responsibility, what God is expecting from each and every one of us. Um, thank you for joining us tonight again. It's about 30 minutes uh, program. I started, you know, I started with, you know, um, my personal story, how God, you know, um, you know, um, how God dealt with me. Let me just say how he opened my eyes. You know, I think um, one of the prayer, the most important prayer is uh, having to know, having to, having to have an understanding of your purpose on heart, what God has really called you to do, uh, your, your, the reason why you are here. I think um, it's one of the reasons, because one might actually be living and that person may not know why. You don't know why God, you know, has really called you. I that was how I started. I knew um, after some time that, you know, of course, immediately I got born again. I gave my life to Jesus Christ, 1988, uh, by the grace of God. Of course, a lot of things had happened since then, but then um, that actually helped me open my eyes to really know what exactly, you know, what God wanted me to do. And immediately I got born again, and then I started, you know, disciple, uh, discipleship class. I was um, getting myself involved because um, I keep telling people that if you are not active in your local church, if you have not been very useful in your local church, you might be very, it might be very difficult for you to be useful on the mission field. That's just the truth, you know. Um, Every missionary must have a base. You must be part of the, um, your local church, and you must also be involved in your local church. You know, find whenever people come to tell me that, oh, we want to join you, want to follow you. I mean, I keep on telling them, you must be, you know, very active in what are you doing presently? What are you doing? You must be involved in the life of your church, you know, which is also very important. I shared with you um, how. You know, I got, you know, born again. And most of the things I, I'm doing now uh, are not something that is very difficult for me. Why? Because when I got born again, I, you know, got myself involved in the life of the church. I got born again when I was in secondary school. And then I was a um, assistant president of the school fellowship. And then, you know, I was very active preaching, doing evangelism, inviting people and then training, you know, modeling Christ to people. I mean, all those things are not something that is very strange, you know. And then in the church too, um, I was also very involved. I was, um, uh, I mean, I, there is nothing about activity, church activity that I wouldn't want to be part of, you know. <laughs> and then it has really helped me, you know, going forward when it was time. For me to go into uh, missions, uh, even before then, I talk about you know you being able to know what it means to pray for missions. I mean, God wants us to you know start before you even start going. You need to begin to pray. Start with prayer. Um, what meant mission? We started in a room um, um, with my family and some of my friends. We'll gather together and then we'll be praying for the nations. We are not even praying for ourselves, we pray for nations. I mean, all when I was in um, when I was um, with, with my brother, you know, I had a fellowship group. I mean, what we do all through the night is just to be interceding for the nations. I have so many great men, servants of God that have really, you know, inspired me, you know, to actually uh, be so much involved in mission. So when it was time for God, you know, to send me out, you know, when it was time for me to go into full-time missions, it wasn't difficult for me. And up to now, by the special grace of God, I enjoy doing it. I have been so active in the children ministry. 
and, and that's the reason why we have so many schools mission one of the reason why um to impact to raise you know young boys and girls and then you know i was in the children church a lot of things thank god for great um servant of god that we work together i mean i was in the youth um ministry i was an interpreter you know a lot of things when it comes to um what do you call it prayer warrior i was very very in, in, uh, active i was part of the mission team you know that is that is that has been so everything on the field you know that i face that i go through i've actually experienced them you know so it wasn't a very difficult thing for me you know as a missionary to when it was time god said oh, well it was time i have prepared you enough for this task even though it's going to be demanding but thank god for also the uh, good family background where i was raised up you know because all those things all those factors are very very important god who knew the end from the beginning would have been preparing you ahead of time so um these are some of the things i've shared in the last you know couple of days you know and then um I i'm still going to continue by the special grace of god um sharing with us every almost every day as the lord and laws and every other things you know all other things being equal you know um i'm going to be sharing with us but before i continue uh please i want to tell you please share this uh video go to our um website um uh facebook page social media handles please go and share share and not only share me tell other people tell other believers i mean take time to do that be deliberate about it you know because like I've already said, missionaries are also part of the body of Christ. They are also integral part of the body of Christ. Because they are, these are the people that are going to places where we have never, or well, some of us may not be able to reach. You know, I, I think I've shared it. Let me just remind you of the story I, I had, the encounter I had when I was sleeping and then and two ft men i mean i i i, I do call them um i saw them as a um, you know an agent of death you know <laughs> that, that's how people die sometimes because you don't know what happened when people at the final moment because but this one was not even a dream it was like you know at 5 a.m in the morning and then um, those two men came into my room and they said it was time for me to die for them to have told me that it was time for me to die you know i, I knew that <laughs> there was there was great there was a problem you know and then after that um what i was telling them was the reason why they would not they, they must they could not do that you know i told them that if you kill me now the people in the village they are waiting for me they will suffer you know I, i'm just trying to tell you that you know god in his own infinite mercy and you know he will allow us to have some certain experience you know and those experience or experiences as it were you know will help us to know why we are alive you know because many people are living they don't know why they are living they don't know the essence of their existence they don't know why they are alive they don't know why they don't know why god you know is keeping them i know why god is keeping me and i, and I know that is because because if you look at my post you only see me you know you always see me maybe in the village in the bush among these people <laughs> and uh, from the beginning uh, it is uh, my you know great desire that they also we have opportunity we have this uh, privilege of hearing the gospel i mean it pains me it gives me so much you know uh, um pains you know when you just look around and then you get to some places you discover that some people have never had the gospel before i mean people wake up like animals they go to the bush they go to their farm and they come back they sleep they wake up they sleep and all these things are big challenge they are actually you know it calls for so much concern and that was why i felt like they need the gospel more now you know i do tell christian it's good to uh, you know build a relationship with god to go to church and then there's that if you have been going to church for five years i mean minimum of five years or two years it will be difficult for you to go to church every day i mean week in week out without you hearing some messages again and again i mean the, it might come in another dimension for example prayer for example who is jesus for example you know how do you follow jesus and all that 
But there are some people that have not even heard about Jesus Christ at all. They wake up like, you know, animals and without God. You know, and these are the people that, you know, the Lord is really, you know, sending us to. He wants us to go and reach out to them. That's why we call them Unreach People Group. Unreach People Group. There are still many of them who are out there that they are just living. I remember the last time I went to the pygmies. You know, they live in their camp, very short like this. They live in their camp, and their houses are just, they, they make their houses with leaves. You know, majority of them are just living in the forest, you know, without Jesus, without anybody, without the church, no school, nothing. I mean, they are, and they are living their life like that. I mean, these people, Jesus Christ also came to the world to die for them, you know, and this is why we as a missions agency, we have committed ourselves, you know, to ensure that, you know, all these people who have not had the gospel, they will also hear the gospel. I mean, for once, and so that they will be able to, the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. We want them to know that the Lord is is good and that's why that's the essence of what i'm trying to do to share with us what is going our mission stories what is happening on the mission field how you can also be part of what god is doing because it's also very important that you know it's not one man show you know the great commission is not one man show all of us must be involved every christian that's why we are actually talking about this you know in a very you know broad way you know in a very elaborate manner that you are a missionary we are here primarily to do mission in john chapter 20 verse 21 in um um, um john chapter 17 17 verse 18 these are the um the two key verses that we've been looking at you know when i started i talked about john uh, 17 where jesus christ was praying in fort from 14 down to 18 jesus christ was saying that oh he was referring to the world they are in the world but they are not of the world even as i am not of the world and in verse 18 it was very clear uh, when jesus christ was saying that or where he said that you know, I have, you know, as I as you have sent me to the world, I, I'm also sending them. So for them, we could see that the church, the every Christian, every believer that is on earth today, we are primarily here to represent Jesus Christ. We are ambassadors of Christ. We want, and what are, what is our mission? Our mission is to ensure that. You know, the gospel reaches the hands of the heart. And because that is the only thing that can actually bring back, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ said, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the nations of the heart. And so the end shall come. And in Second Peter chapter 3, verse, um, verses 8 and 9, verse 9 says that the Lord is not slow concerning his promise. He said, He's waiting, he's long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish. You know, like I've been saying it, the death of a sinner is a loss to the kingdom of God. I mean, how will Jesus Christ feel when a sinner dies? Because you refuse to preach to them. Because somebody who has the phone to, you know, send those missionaries that are willing to even go. And because they are holding it back, all in the name of myself and I, my family, my career and all that. All those things are excellent. They are good. But as God is prospering you, remember Esther. God bless Esther. God promoted her. She was, you know, blessed. But she forgot that she had forgotten that, you know, um, there was a reason why God had actually, you know, blessed her, promoted her, placed her where she was. And then, you know, thank God for the ministry of Holy Spirit in the person of Mordecai who actually, you know, brought us. So um, yesterday, uh, for the past two days now, a few days, we've been looking at, you know, how you can actually catch the uh, vision or the body or the fire. How can we kindle the fire? How can you be a missionary? You know, because it is your responsibility. John 20, 21, he said, as you have sent me to the world, even so I'm sending them to the world, which means that a missionary is a sent one. And every Christian, you know, there are three calls that we must answer. I'm going to talk about that because at the time, I'm going to just spend some few uh, days to talk about what we teach, 
what what are those things that we are supposed to teach them you know <laughs> and i'm going to spend some time to really shed more light on that you know the, but let me quickly say this there are three uh, um, important call that we must answer the first one is to come to him you know all those three calls three invitations were actually given by jesus christ or we are made by jesus christ and the first one is come unto me you know he did not say go to church he said come unto me you know that's where many people are missing it all you know until a man find christ you know he will continue to live in confusion many people are in church today and yet they did not find, find, find christ you know he said come unto me all of you um that are you know every lady he said i will give you rest and then number two uh because of our time jesus christ said follow me and i will make you fishers of men follow me you understand follow me you know matthew 4 19 talks about that the first one matthew 11 28 you know follow me so the first one come and so when jesus christ asks you to come i mean somebody said come for example if i say come i mean you should also be attentive to hear you know why are you calling me why did you call me why did you ask me to come you understand it's very important you know somebody will not just say come on to me and then you sit down and be looking i mean we have not been saved to be useless you know <laughs> no god has not saved you to be useless we have not been saved to be to become problem you understand and we have not been saved to become liability we have been saved to become responsible you know the reason why jesus christ has actually saved you is so that you can actually become useful and responsible i mean i mean a citizen of the kingdom for example if a citizen of the country there are a lot of things obligation that you are expected to do you are, not, you are not just born into a family and become oh you are all you are just you know concerned about is your food you know let me just eat sleep i mean <laughs> you are not even supposed to be in that family you know so the first one is come the second one is follow me now jesus christ was the one that said he should follow he was the one that said come so now th this is where many people are missing it because it will be very difficult for us to discover to know god's purpose for our life until we begin to follow him you know you remember the account i'm going to talk about that you know in mark chapter uh, three where jesus christ asked his disciples to come you know and then so that they can be with him you know he wanted them to learn he wanted them to learn so if you read matthew chapter 11 you know um 28 29 he said take your my yoke upon you and learn of me and learn of me you know and then luke chapter 6 verse 40 i'm going to talk about that these are some of the things we teach you know um on the field you understand he said anyone that has been perfectly trained will be like him would be like his teacher he said anyone that you know you are like a pupil so he said you should follow me and the third one is go you know <laughs> he said go into the world and that is the area i've really been dealing with we've been looking at today the person that said we should come is the person this said uh, that same person that said we should follow me and he's still the same person that said we should go you know all those uh, uh, um, uh, commands are very very important they are very powerful i mean come follow go and he said where did he ask us to go when somebody said go go where he said go into the world and do what make disciples go into the world and preach the gospel go into the world and speak for me be my witness let them know that i have paid it all i have paid the price on the cross of calvary and all that and then tell them about me let them see you let them see me in your life so if you have spent time with him if you have been well disciple it will not be difficult for you to communicate this gospel you know to those people that you are talking to and that is the essence of you know mission so going into the world is like you've been saints and so jesus christ now say that you are now a missionary wherever anywhere you are as long as it is the world the world is our parish the world is our mission field of course many people went to church you know yesterday and some people will still go to church today you go to church but nobody lives in the church we at the church is like a filling station where you are full you are recharged but you are not going to remain there you are supposed to go so that's why when jesus christ was talking to his disciple 
He was so categorical. He was so specific. He said, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the heart. He did not say you are the light of your church. He did not say. So he said, you are the light of the world. So the world should be a priority. Wherever you are is your world. The world of children, the world of the youth, the world of men, the world of women. We are there to actually lighten the world. To, you know, provide, you know. So you give them, number one, the gospel. You preach the gospel. Because if you go somewhere and they, they don't have the, the they, they don't know Jesus, whatever you are doing there, you are just wasting your time. Because what shall it profit a man? If he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul, what shall a man give as an exchange for his soul? So you give them the gospel of, of salvation. I mean, the one that Jesus Christ has paid on the cross of Calvary. My time is running so fast, but I'm just trying to relay the foundation so that at least as a, as a reminder, what I am trying to say is that we have been commissioned by Jesus Christ to go into the world and to do what? To preach the gospel. Number two, to make disciples. Number three, to be his witnesses. So as a witness, you are there speaking as if you had, you had an experience. You have the first, uh, first hand information. It must be convincing. It must come with. So, everything you are going to tell them, they must actually see that what you have told them or what you have actually, you are telling them, well, is very, very true. So, how do we now let them know that it's true? And that's why I talked about the gospel of uh, indeed and then um, so i'm going to quickly talk about that hopefully i'll continue because i just want to relay the foundation or remind us or just try to revisit this aspect in romans chapter 15 i i read it um think yesterday or a few days ago and it's uh, let me read from verse 18 for i will not be able to speak of any of those things which christ has not accomplished through me in word let me start from um, let me okay let me just uh, continue let me continue he said in word and then he said indeed in word and indeed you know let me just he said to make the gospel of uh, the gentiles obedient now he now said that in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the spirit of god so that from jerusalem and round about the uh elysium elysium Hallelujah. He lives come. He said, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. This man said he has gone over so many places. What was he doing? He preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that is what God wants us to do. He wants us to go and preach everywhere. So how do we do it? This is this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to tell us that it requires you know some level of commitment commitment in the area of you know um giving to support the mission so um yesterday i talked about you know your identifying project on the mission field because paul said that i preach the word the gospel in word and i also preach in deed and he also talked about miracles signs and wonders and these are some of the things that God has helped me to experience as a missionary. I've I had so many, you know, um, um, uh, testimonies. I have so many um, um, stories along that line, but I don't have all the time to talk about that today. Um, what I'm trying to say is that as we are taking the gospel there, we must also begin to ask ourselves, what other things can we do? In, order, in what other areas can we minister to them? And I said it the other time. Let me just repeat it again. The peculiarity of the nature of what God has called us to do, it requires a lot of money, a lot of financial support, our resources. And why am I saying that? We are going to the villages. We are not even going to the cities. We are going to the villages. 
where these people, you know, they, they, they are lacking, apart from the fact that they are lacking the gospel, they don't have Jesus, they also need a lot of things. So that's where you can also come in and you can be part of it. I mean, looking out there and look for missionary and see how you can actually minister to their need because these people, they have a lot of need. Let me quickly read some few verses of the Bible before I run off. So what I'm trying to say is that once you begin to follow Jesus, you what Jesus Christ will begin to form in your life, the character is that he makes you to be a responsible citizen of the kingdom. You know, I, I don't criticize people that, you know, um, share their, you know, um, account details online. We do that too as a ministry. But the truth of the matter is that should missionary be asking, be pushing, be coercing, be forcing you or begin to, you know, make you feel like, oh, you must support. You know, if you have the Holy Spirit, you should understand that this assignment is our re collective responsibility. That's why I said that one thing that Jesus Christ will do in your life is to change you and then to make you to be a responsible. You know, the moment um, Jesus Christ ascended and they were persuaded that, oh, he was the one, he died, he resurrected. The Bible says immediately they were commissioned. Mark, Mark chapter 16. The Bible says that they went everywhere and preaching the word, and the Lord was walking with them with signs following them. Signs following them. They went immediately. They went immediately. So, I mean, they, it, it, it was no longer an issue for them to obey Jesus Christ. Look, if you go through the book of Acts, you'll see how these people, they were ready to even die. They told them not to preach. They went ahead and still preach. They, they said, you cannot threaten us again. I mean, they, they knew that they were actually kept back behind by Jesus Christ in the world to continue with his ministry. The Holy Spirit was given to them so that they could also continue with, his, with the ministry. So, now, when you see missionaries and you see missions, you should know, most especially those people that are working among the unrich people group in the villages, in the rural communities. I mean, yesterday, um, uh, 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 one of our mission field in uh, northern Nigeria, northeast, you know, they told me, they said, oh, pastor, we need, we need a drum, uh, a drum, this local drum, you know, and then we, because they have also um, put so many pl things in place in the church by themselves, we, I mean, out of excitement, we provided it for them. My uh, missionary then said that they dance with this thing till about 12 o'clock. I mean, they don't have any other thing. They don't have any other place. They don't have access to all this um, life that we have. You know, they don't know anything. They are in the dark, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, financially, and all that. So we really need to be committed to whoever is working among them. You know, we have to be committed. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16. I know I have less than three minutes more. Please don't forget to um, share this uh, video and then uh, share all other posts. Don't just, not just my uh, post alone. Like I've been saying, I'm a kingdom person. I I'm just representing just a very little uh, part of the body of Christ. So we have many other believers, many other servants of God who are doing, you know, amazing works you know, on the mission field. And also, I mean, when I say on the mission field all over the world, we should be involved in whatever they are doing. And we should not even be reminded. I mean, it will be a sin for you to be reminded to pray each day for a missionary. Remember, remember them in your prayer. Say a word of prayer for them. A lot of them are going through a lot of things. So in uh, Hebrews chapter 13, perhaps this is going to be the only, the second and the last I'm going to read today. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6, 16. He said, but to do good. But, to, but do not forget to do good. And to share. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. He said, you must not forget to do good and to share. You remember when I was reading the book of Ephesians. He said, we have been saved. We have been transformed. We are his workmanship. To, pro, to actually produce good works. Let me read it again in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, For we are his workmanship, 
created in Christ. Created in Christ. You know what I mean by created? Now you are a new creation. You are not in Christ. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passing away, all things. So you have been created in Christ to do what? Now he said, for good in Christ Jesus, for good works. For good works. So part of the good works that God is expecting you to do as a Christian, who knows that, oh, I'm a missionary Christian, I am on earth for a particular reason, is to identify, you know, mission and missionaries and ask them, which, is there any way I can be of assistance to you? I mean, there are a lot of things, some of them, a lot of projects, Project, when I say project, it's not just for themselves, just to help those communities. They are working, you know. We lost um, um, one of the young converts. The, the, the husband has not really been coming to church, but I got to know very late um, um, they're from um, one of our mission field in West Africa. I mean, they, uh, they, the team just shared the picture with me a day before that man died. You know, so they were going out, and so they went to the house. They saw the man lying on the uh, floor with his leg very big, and they were asking him, you know, asking the wife. The wife is a convert, is a disciple. What happened to your husband? He said, you know, I, I think she, he had a problem in the leg, maybe an attack or so. The leg got swollen up, and then they had no money to take that person to the hospital. I mean, there were three, three different instances within this last week. Yesterday night, I got another one. I was asking myself that, okay, how do we have... And the missionary there, the head of the team was telling me, he said, may the Lord provide money so that we'll be able to help these people. The truth of the matter is that missionary, how much is the offering itself? I mean, missionaries are also, some of them are even doing farming. They are into tent making in order to take care of themselves and their family. How, where are they going to get the phone to even say that they want to take somebody to the, to, to the hospital? We have three different, you know, cases, you know, before us, as I speak. So what am I trying to say? We, are, we should understand that the people that are working in this terrain, they will need a lot of, you know, financial resources or support, you know, and then you give. So the Bible says that, but do not forget to do good and to share for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So when I say sacrificial giving, Whatever you are giving, you are actually giving it unto God because it's a sacrifice that is offered unto God. So when you are a citizen, a child, a son, or a daughter in the kingdom, you should not be coerced. You should not be forced. You should not be, I mean, it should be your, you should get to that place of understanding. That's why I said when you lack understanding, oh, it will be a very difficult thing. We'll continue tomorrow. Thank you, Father, for today. We ask, oh God, that you will really minister to the heart of your sons and daughter. And you will raise missionaries, oh God, of missionaries who have that art for the people. You raise men and women who will commit themselves to praying for missions and missionaries, to empower them, to adopt projects, and to give sacrificially. Thank you, Father. Lord, we lift up every missionary unto you that you will send help to them in the name of Jesus. No missionary will be stranded. As many missionaries that are laboring among the unreached people group, oh God, who have no financial capacity to actually meet the need, Lord, we pray that you raise help for them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We'll continue tomorrow by the special grace of God from where we stop. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.